welcome to the Jet Setter Show, where we explore lifestyle-friendly destinations worldwide. Enjoy and learn from a variety of experts on topics ranging from upscale travel at wholesale prices to retiring overseas, to global real estate and business opportunities, to tax havens and expatriate opportunities. You'll get great ideas on unique cultures, causes, and cruise vacations. Whether you're wealthy or just want to live a wealthy lifestyle, The Jet Setter Show is for you. Here's your host, Jason Hartman. Welcome to The Jet Setter Show. This is Jason Hartman, your host, where we explore lifestyle-friendly destinations worldwide. I think you'll enjoy the interview we have for you today, and we will be back with that in less than 60 seconds here on The Jet Setter Show. Have you listened to the Creating Wealth series? I mean, from the beginning. If not, you can go ahead and get book one that shows one through 20 in digital download. These are advanced strategies for wealth creation. For more information, go to jasonhartman.com. It's my pleasure to welcome Rudy Maxa to the show. He's one of America's premier consumer travel experts and is host and executive producer of Rudy Maxa's World, the Emmy Award-winning 20-episode public television travel series featuring destinations as diverse as Korea and Argentina. Rudy, welcome. How are you? Well, nice to be here with you, Jason. I'm I, unhappy to report I'm so old that those 20 episodes are now 91. I think well, you probably found an old bio online. <laughs> I am looking at an old bio. That's absolutely true. So fantastic. Well, I want to talk to you about a bunch of things, Rudy, but you recently just finished a speech talking about the misconceptions so many of us carry around about travel. And we think we know what's right and how to do it and how to how to beat the system, if you will. But you've shown that a lot of people are uh, wrong about that, right? Well, I think I, I, I did a speech the other day at the Kansas City Public Library called Everything You Thought You Know About Travel is Wrong. That's a slight exaggeration, but as you know, when we do titles of books and speeches, sometimes you do that to catch your audience. you, you got to make it interesting, yeah. <laughs> but I think that there have been changes that even even frequent travelers you know, haven't really keyed into yet. For example, for years, I and fellow travelers flew on airlines or, you know, used credit cards uh, to charge things to get miles so we could get free tickets. And so the conventional wisdom these days is, oh, you can't get any free tickets anymore. All the airlines, the seats are all gone before you, you can't get to Europe in the summer. Well, first of all, the paradigm has shifted. You can fly to get miles, sure. But the way you get miles these days is by applying for credit cards. And then maybe giving them up in six and eight months and then waiting another six months and applying for more. And there is a I call them idiot savants lovingly. There's a there's a cluster of of experts on frequent flyer miles and hotel points that have figured this system out. One of them just the other day applied for five credit cards and one fell swoop, which, you know, credit agencies don't even report because it all comes in at the same time. So nobody else sees it. And he picked up three hundred fifty thousand miles in one afternoon. Wow. Were, yeah, were they 350,000 miles though that on one airline? I mean, they couldn't have been on one airline because they were different airline cards. So Exactly. Exactly. Or no, or they could there are, you know, any number of generic cards like the Barclay Mastercard that I just got that you can apply uh, American Express membership points. All of these cards will give you 35, 40, 50, 60, sometimes 100,000 points or miles to sign up and you can just transfer in the case of a Barclay card, you can just tra- just buy a ticket on any airline at any time with no blackout dates. Uh, based on the price of the ticket and how many points you have. So you're right. If it's an airline-affiliated card, it'll go to the airline uh, that's affiliated with the card. But there are hundreds of cards that aren't affiliated with specific airlines in which you can apply those points or miles, whatever they call them, usually points, uh, to any airline and transfer transfer them into your favorite airline's account, in which case they become miles instantly. For example, one of my favorite sites is called milevalue.com. It's run by an American guy who lives in Buenos Aires. And this guy sends out seven days a week bulletins about opportunities for gaining miles and how to really get business class seats for less miles. And he is one of the few that actually, well, all these guys will send you a free, if you sign up for it, a free daily newsletter, at least five days a week. Uh, Let me mention another one while we're at it. Milevalue.com and thepointsguy.com are two to begin with. And while they'll all uh, send you free email bulletins, which are just mind-boggling to me what they what these guys know. Uh, one of them, Scott at Mile Value, will actually for $99 work to get your award tickets. I've been doing this for 20 years. I was a, one of the first members of American Airlines and United Airlines Frequent Flyer 
Monage programs because I alone thought they were going to last. Everybody around me thought they were like the CB craze, the you know that they'd be citizen band radio craze. It'd go away in a year. But I put them to the test. I had to get a friend of mine from Washington D.C. to the south of France late in May, coming back out of London in early June. That's prime time. Yeah, prime time. I did my best, and all I could find was two hundred thousand, two hundred sixty thousand mileage awards. That you mean? You mean that's what they wanted to charge for the ticket? Exactly, as an award ticket. The ticket, had, when I had bought one matching, it would have been $1,200. But by the time I went looking for hers, it was 2400 And I was first to paying that. So I found these you know, outrageous number of miles you'd have to cash in. So I, I, I wrote Scott in Argentina. I said, OK, I'm going to pay your $99 fee. Here are the airlines. You don't have to tell him. You don't tell him your code words. He doesn't actually go into your frequent flyer program. You say, here are the airlines that I have frequent flyer miles on. And here's how many I have approximately, whether it's you know, 85,000, 400,000, whatever. So I gave him four airlines and hundreds of thousands of miles to work with. And he wrote back a day later, apologizing that he'd accomplished the task, but it took 85,000 miles. He thought he could get it for 50. Not only that, but before my friend leaves late in May for this trip, he thinks he can get her upgraded to business going over, and then I'll only be charged 80,000 instead of 85,000 miles. And not only that, when she comes back from London, she still has the right on this award ticket to go to one other place anywhere in, in, in the 48 contiguous states for no more miles. Or he said I could get her to like Buenos Aires or Santiago for 10,000 more miles. And I said, well, get her to go to LA. We'll go to LA at some point. So, and you just pick a date in the future and you can change that date for no cost if you do it 30 days ahead of the day you want to fly. So we just picked a date at random later in the summer for an LA ticket. So 85,000 miles, she's flying maybe business class all the way to Nice from Washington, D.C. And then Coach Cast is on United, by the way, and coming back on United nonstop from London to Washington. And then at her leisure, taking a trip out to LA. Now, I was astounded. Plus, he gave me three other options, depending on time of arrival and departure. I was just boggled. And I got to tell you, the next time I'm looking for a frequent flyer mileage ticket, I'm going to go to Scott at MileValue.com. The $99 is well spent. It cost me $221 in fees and taxes, I believe, on top of that. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I got to ask you a question. That's amazing. Uh, another really interesting website I've noticed lately is Flight Fox. Are you familiar with this one? I'm not. I'll look at it right now. What is it's interesting. It's basically crowdsourcing like the best airline deals, not travel agents, just people around the world that want to earn a fee. Like the 99 designs concept, if you want to have a logo made, you hold a contest. Anyway, check it out and maybe we'll have you back. I'm on not it now. It says for only $24, work with an army of experts to find the best flights. Wow. It's, an, I'll it's, take a, neat, that it's a neat yeah. idea. It's a neat idea. But if you're doing some complex international travel, they say you got to do the higher amount of, I think, $79 to get any real real participation anyway uh, yeah yeah and the other the, along the lines of what 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 we used to think about travel or, or what we might not know now is you know this creeping move afoot begun by delta which will start january of 2014 that reaching elite status it's not going to be enough that you fly x number of miles or x number of segments you have to spend x number of dollars on delta and what a lot of people don't realize is uh, their delta is not going to include your fees and taxes which you know can be 20 to 30 percent of an airline ticket these days as money you've spent on an airline ticket they're only going to charge what you gave Delta. In the most extreme example, this uh, January, you could fly a round trip between New York and London for about uh, $900. The airline that flew you got 121 of those dollars. So you think, hey, I'm, I'm building up to that you know, silver, gold, or platinum status on, on, on that airline because I just put 900 points on my, in my money account. No, you put 121 in. So taxes and fees are so high to fly in and out of the U.K., so that, and I'm sure the other airlines are going to start following because it's a way of rewarding the customers who spend the most money, not the customers who fly the most, or those of us who used to do mileage runs. And I'm sure you probably have, Jason, where you took that unnecessary trip or that complicated trip. It only cost you three hundred eighty dollars, and somehow you gained fifteen thousand miles. You know? No, I haven't done that. It, this is all just too much brain damage. It's too darn complicated. These <laughs> systems are so complex. I just cannot believe it. Well, that's why I'm leaving it to the pros now, as I mentioned. <laughs> yeah, no, I you you gave some good referrals, and I like that. I, I I went to the website. I saw a picture of Scott kissing a giraffe there in Nairobi. I'm going to use that. I'm going to take advantage of that. I think that's fantastic. I mean, I've told all my friends. I just think it's I, I'm flabbergasted at what he did. Yeah, that's fantastic. Okay, give us some other great tips. Well, you know, there's the standard tips as we come into summer of you know go to cities on the sum, go go to cities on weekends to get hotel deals because the business travelers aren't there and the rates drop and go to go to resorts on the on the weekdays when business travelers aren't lounging around the resorts on the weekends. And of course, we just passed April 15th, so that means uh, the Caribbean is on sale. You'll find airfares much cheaper than they were this time last month, and hotel rates, you know, 40 or 40% or more 
uh, off on resorts in the Caribbean. So it's a good time to do that. Yeah, fantastic. What else do you see going on out there? For rental cars, you know, this is the season where Hertz and all the big Hertz, Avis and National, all the big rental car companies have to get their their rolling stock, as it were, from Florida back up north. Oh, that's interesting. No, and from and 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 from out west, further up north there as well. So you know they'll, they'll charge you like seven fifty a day for a rental car uh, if you're willing to go against the grain and drive it. You know, drive it back from Florida where all the snowbirds were using it. And then of course every spring, which we're in now. Um, I don't know when it stops. I think the end of May, Enterprise rent a car rent a car offers these incredible weekend deals of like nine ninety five a day if you pick it up on Thursday or Friday and you can return it on Sunday or Monday. Keep in mind that that's mainly for their neighborhood offices, and their offices are often closed Saturday afternoon and Sunday. So keep that into consideration when you're doing it. But you can return the car on Sunday and drop the keys in. So uh, so rental cars are on sale right now, just as the Caribbean's on sale and, and rental cars that need to get back to their home bases are on sale. Cruise lines prices are down. I notice a lot of deals coming in on that. And the cruise industry has admitted in their, at least in their trade publications, that the recent black eye of, you know, the carnival ship that was stranded, et cetera, has, has it's really hurt the cruise industry a bit. So if you look around, I think you'll find some deals on cruises, but particularly last minute ones. What about hotels? Do you have a great hotel recommendation? I like Hotwire personally. Well, you know, I, I think there's a variety of places to look for hotels, and I think Hotwire is a good place. It's owned by Expedia, so I don't know that it's you know going to give you huge bargains. But I have an app, there's an app for both Android and iOS phones, uh, you know, iPhones called uh, called Hotel Tonight. I don't know if you're familiar with it, Jason. Are you? I am familiar with it. I've looked at it. I've checked out a hotel or two, but I've I've never I've, used it. I've used it three times. In fact, I used it in New York just last week. I arrived at the Waldorf Astoria for a meeting, and I thought I had a reservation for Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Turns out I only had one for Monday and Tuesday. And I said, well, what can you do for me? I was standing there Sunday afternoon at 3.30. He said, well, I'll be, you know, we'll give you the special rate because you're attending this meeting, this convention, uh, 339 a night. Well, while he was looking that up, I had gone on hotel tonight, and I wound up at the Libra- Library Hotel, which is a perfectly charming hotel at 41st and Madison, uh, for 199 a night with free Wi-Fi. So uh, the, the, let's maybe explain to our listeners, Hotel Tonight is an app that, that every in, in major cities, not only in the United States, they've now gone abroad. They have a group of they, they check with hotels to see good hotel. They, they go from budget up to four and five star hotels uh, to check and see if they have any empty beds, any empty rooms. And of course, the clock's ticking for those hotels. And so they will say, OK, we got five rooms or one room or 12, 20 rooms, whatever. And we'll give it to you at this rate. Now, you'll only see that rate after 12 noon in the city you're looking for a hotel in. Sometimes you can extend that rate for a day or two beyond, but maybe not. But I certainly have used now used it three times when I've been stuck at you know, Kennedy. I couldn't get to Bermuda because of weather. There I was in New York with no hotel room at six o'clock at night, and I got a fabulous room, the Carlton, for two fifteen. And when I went to the desk without telling them who I was, I said, "I need a room. What would it be tonight?" They said, "Oh, four forty. We have a room for you." <laughs> yeah, right. I said, "Well, fortunately, I have one at two fifteen, and here's my name." So I, I find hotel tonight very, very handy. I also find if you're going to stay a long time, negotiating with a hotel, and then or I'll just go to Vegas, where unless there's a big convention in town, they nearly pay you to take the room. Right, right. Yeah, fantastic. Well, good stuff, Rudy. This has been great. Any final things you want to wrap up with? Any great tips? So give out your website, of course, and tell people where they can learn more about you, too. Well, you, my television show, I have 91 shows on the great episodes, 91 episodes on the great destinations of the world, and those DVDs are for sale, and there's other travel information at maxa.tv, M-A-X-A dot TV. And then I host a syndicated radio show that's on 170 news talk stations and XM radio every weekend. You can hear podcasts and read my travel minutes that I do five days a week for them at rudymaxa.com, R-U-D-Y maxa.com. And like me at Facebook. I'm trying to get to 3,000 likes, Jason. I'm almost there. Rudy Maxa travel slash leisure on Facebook. I'm sure you will be there in no time. Final thoughts, Rudy. Now that's about all the plugs I could get in, Jason. Geez, I thought I did pretty well there. I, yeah. No, I'm just, you know, you know, let me give a final thought, sure. Jason. You know, I, I, I talk about all these ways of getting frequent flyer miles and running and, you know, you and I talk about websites and it's work and you got to compare and contrast. I don't want to make travel sound like work. You know, you know, the Internet has been the biggest boon for all of us as travelers because so much information is available. Right. The problem is there's so much information it's available. Too much, yeah. And now we have to figure out how to find the best of it. And that's our particular uh, that's our particular cross to bear as travelers. But, you know, at the end of the day, you're still going somewhere and that's never bad. Yep, that's true. That's true. Good stuff. Well, Rudy Maxa, thank you so much for joining us today. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me on, Jason. My pleasure. This show is produced by the Hartman Media Company, all rights reserved. For distribution or publication rights and media interviews, please visit www.hartmanmedia.com or email media at 
hartmanmedia.com. Nothing on this show should be considered specific personal or professional advice. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, real estate, or business professional for individualized advice. Opinions of guests are their own, and the host is acting on behalf of Platinum Properties Investor Network, Inc. exclusively.